So there was a historic moment, a big milestone uh, for Neuralink, in part for humanity, with uh, the first human getting a Neuralink implant in January of this year. Uh, take me through the surgery uh, on Noland. What did it feel like to be part of this? Yeah. Well, we, um, we we're lucky to have just incredible partners at the Barrow Neurologic Institute. They are, uh, I think, the premier neurosurgical hospital in the world. Uh, they, <laughs> they made everything as easy as possible for the trial uh, to get going and, and helped us immensely uh, with their expertise on how to, uh, how to arrange the details. It was a much more high pressure surgery in some ways. I mean, even though the, you know, the outcome wasn't particularly in question in terms of our participants' safety, the number of observers, you know, right. the number of people, there's conference rooms full of people watching live streams in the hospital, um, rooting for this to go perfectly. And that just adds pressure that uh, is not typical for uh, even the most intense production neurosurgery, say removing a tumor or, you know, placing deep brain stimulation electrodes. And it had never been done on a human before. There were unknown unknowns. Um, and so, uh, definitely a, a moderate pucker factor there for the whole team, uh, not knowing if we were going to encounter, say, uh, a degree of brain movement that was unanticipated or uh, a degree of brain sag that took the brain far away from the skull and made it difficult to insert or some other unknown, unknown problem. Fortunately, everything uh, went well and uh, that that surgery is one of the smoothest uh, outcomes we could have imagined. Were you nervous? I mean, you're extremely, a bit of a quarterback in, like, in the Super Bowl kind of situation. Extremely nervous, uh, <laughs> extremely. I was very pleased when it went well and then and when it was over. Um, <laughs> looking forward to number two. Yeah. Um, Even with all that practice, all of that, just you've never been in a situation that's so high stakes in terms of people watching. Yeah. And you, we should also probably mention, given how the media works, a lot of people, um, you know, maybe in a dark kind of way, hoping it doesn't go well. Well, I think wealth is easy to hate. Um or envy or or whatever. And uh, I think a, there's a whole industry uh, around driving clicks and bad news is great for clicks. And so any way to take an event and turn it into bad news uh, is gonna be really good for, for clicks. It just sucks because I think in, it puts pressure on people. It discourages people from, from trying to solve really hard problems because to solve hard problems, you have to go into the unknown. You have to do things that haven't been done before and you have to take risks. Yeah. Uh, calculated risks, you have to do all kinds of safety precautions, but risks not, nevertheless. And uh, I just wish there would be more celebration of that, of the risk taking versus like yeah. people just waiting on the, on, on the sidelines, like waiting for failure Yeah. and then pointing out the failure. Uh, yeah, it sucks, but you know, in this case, it's, it's it's really great that everything went just flawlessly. But it's unnecessary pressure, I would say. Now that there is a human with literal skin in the game, you know, there's a participant who whose well being rides on this doing well. You you have to be a pretty bad person to be rooting for that to go wrong. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. you know, hopefully people look in the mirror and and realize that at some point. So did you get to actually front row seat, like watch the robot work? Like what, uh, you get to see the whole thing? Yeah, I mean, I you know, because a, a, an MD needs to be in charge of all of the medical decision-making throughout the process, um, I unscrubbed from the surgery after exposing the brain and presenting it to the robot and um, placed the targets on the robot uh, inter software interface that tells the robot where it's going to insert each thread that was done um, with you know my hand on the mouse for whatever that's worth. So you were the one placing the targets? Yeah. Oh, cool. So like it, you know, the, 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 the robot uh, with the computer vision provides a bunch of candidates and you kind of 
finalize the decision. Right. Uh, you know, they, the, the software engineers are amazing on this team. And so they actually provided an interface where you can essentially use a lasso tool <laughs> and select a, a prime area of brain real estate, mm -hmm. and it will automatically avoid the blood vessels in that yeah. region and automatically place a bunch of targets. So, you, you know, that allows, you know, the human robot operator to select uh, really good areas of brain and make dense applications of targets in that in those regions, the regions we think are going to have the most um, high fidelity representations of finger movements and arm movement intentions. I've seen like images of this, and for me with OCD, it's for some reason a really pleasant, uh, I think there's a subreddit called Oddly Satisfying. Yeah, <laughs> love that subreddit. <laughs> So it's oddly satisfying to see the different target sites avoiding the blood vessels and uh, also maximizing like the usefulness of those locations for the signal. It just feels good. It's like, yeah. ah, as, nice. as a person who has a visceral reaction to the brain bleeding, I can tell you it's, yes, especially it's so. extremely satisfying watching the electrodes themselves go into the brain and not cause bleeding. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you said the feeling uh, was of relief when everything went perfectly. Yeah.